So um, for our next presentation this afternoon, we have uh, Uri uh, Doroshko, who's uh, coming as a project uh, manager from the Survey of Israel, and he's going to talk to us about their, uh, their open source journey. So uh, over to you. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, I'm very excited to be here, so I hope I will not make any fuck-ups. <laughs> And there will be, will be no technical problems, as, as it happens quite often. So, okay, so as you said, and my name is Uri, nice to meet you. And we're going to talk about the Israeli geoportal. Uh, I forgot to wrote the URL, so if you're interested in checking out how it is, it's just it's govmap.gov.il. And if you browse through desktop, there's even an English version at the bottom. It's, it's not full capability, but you can check it out. So the first part, I will make an introduction of what we currently have, what we do, which uh, applications we have, and later on I will talk about our near future plans about open source transition. Some of it already exists, some of it will happen quite soon, I hope. So let's start. An introduction, we have over 300, I think it's even 310 already, public layers of information. Um, twice as more not public information for just for organizations uh, to their own use. Uh, we have almost one million monthly hits, which is quite huge for Israel, and we're proud of this amount. Uh, we have cooperation with uh, 45 governmental organizations inside of Israel. They work with our portal, they use our API, I will talk about it. Uh, 40,000 registered users, 7,000 of them are active users creating and collaborating data. And um, our database, is, last time I checked, was 350 gigabytes of vector data and probably something like 100 gigabytes of cached raster data in addition to that. Uh, demonstration of how our portal looks. Uh, I intentionally choose to show you mobile pictures because we chose a mobile first uh, development approach so it will work cross-platform on mobile, on tablet devices, on, on PCs, on laptops, so people could take their work on field as well. And um, another demonstration of our, one of our popular models uh, in collaboration with the Israeli Meteorological Service is the rain radar. It's very popular during winter times when you have rain. Here's actually a rare event of huge rainstorm in April, so I took a screenshot of that. Uh, to remember how it is. And uh, the popularity of this model made us to buy CDN services for cached service uh, map backgrounds. Uh, so it's quite huge popular. Another crucial tool that we have is an online collaboration tool. Uh, we allow each registered user, and registration is for free. Uh, everyone can be registered users. We allow to create and collaborate data, which means you can create uh, on drawing on a map, like the normal geometries, points, lines, and polygons, or you can import your own information that uh, you previously created, uh, either by uh, shape files or geodatabase files, or even TXT, CSV, Excel files, like whichever format you have, and we hope to expand the available formats in the future. And uh, we allow by this to I'll start like a short animation how it works on mobile. We allow actually to all users to create their data on field, both field and office, and uh, create collaborational groups, uh, have different types of, uh, of authorizations for different groups. You can decide which group can use view-only authorization, other groups can administer the data, create more trees of work groups, and this is how it looks. We, we created a point uh, using our location, yeah, on on the phone, and now we have a form which we predefined. The form could be quite rich. We could store their photos. We can uh, make some choose lists. Uh, we can make a, a date picker. So it's very very simple for organizations to create information this way. And so, like ten seconds, the information is created. Uh, our API API is also a free part. And uh, it has two parts. One doesn't even require registration. Anyone can embed our map with the public available information inside their website. 
and uh, even uh, use uh, like a coordinate search without any identification. And the other part is registered. Registered users can use it. We deliver a token uh, to identify themselves. And then we allow much more rich functions like uh, geocoding, intersects, uh, creating geometries, showing uh, information from user servers, and a few examples of what we have. This is uh, Israeli employment services. They show their locations on a map. Uh, it's quite simple one. This is a bit more complicated. The Israel police force show their accident uh, database with the use of our map. They just draw a segment of, uh, of the road of the accidents which the user chose from, from this list. And then they show the information of uh, which kind of accident happened here how many casualties, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the Israeli Ministry of Environmental Protection, they don't have their own public GIS, so they use our API to, to show their information to the public. Uh, they implemented it inside their website, and it's also very popular, and it's used quite a lot by people. And another capability that we have are creating heat maps, uh, which allow users to find uh, better implementations of their information, have more insights. And that's about it from what we currently have. And now let's start a part of where we are going. Uh, so this is what happened after uh, Phos4G in Boston two years ago. Uh, I came back and we started to to research what we, where we want to go and what we want to do, and we just sign up to Mybox Studio, uploaded some small bits of our data, and it's cool. So this is the fir first benchmark of our journey to towards open source version of our portal. And we want to move from this architecture, what we currently have, which is a ESRI-based architecture, a classic architecture of ArcGIS server, SD on Oracle, and JavaScript API. We want to go to Mapbox uh, at the front end. We, we are very impressed by Mapbox GL capabilities uh, to render information. To We're very impressed of the styling. Uh, we want to use also the 3D styling capabilities, and we hope they will be even better in the future. And we use GeoServer. Um, don't need to say much about GeoServer, but uh, it allows our, our allows R to use all the types of inputs, use, us, use the databases that we have. Um, there will be a middle part of the transition that we will still be using Oracle before moving to Postgres, so GeoServer will allow us doing this as well. And exposing WMS, WFS services, and of course Postgres and PostGIS. Uh, which are very powerful databases, and I have in a few slides an example of one model that we already have that we used PostGIS and we couldn't use Oracle there. And th that's where we want to go. We want, uh, we want GeoServer, uh, cache storage with MVT tiles, of course, Mapbox GL on the front, and we're working also on Elasticsearch, which will replace our uh, proprietary a natural language search engine that we currently use. So Elasticsearch is also in beta right now, and we hope it will be on the air quite soon. Another service that we have is uh, we've installed uh, a geo server and we expose the Israeli cadaster database uh, services through it. It's also widely open and it don't Everybody can access it, WMS and WFS. And we want uh, more organization to join and share their information on the server. Uh, here I have a small example of uh, information of uh, Israeli Ministry of Planning, Planning Authority. And we really hope that um, much more organizations will, will use this capability. This is how our beta looks. Uh, the UI exactly the same, but uh, Behind, uh, you can see Mapbox logo here, and all the data comes from GeoServer and, and Postgres. So it maybe doesn't tell you much, but uh, we're very excited to see this. And we, we created our own MVT as well, based on the 
Survey of Israel's topographic data. We put a lot of thought in it because we wanted very good performance, so we, we made an accurate definition of which data will be in, at each level, and we, we made a lot of edits in order to achieve good performance, and I really hope it will be seen by public quite soon. Uh, one more capability which is very demanded by the Israeli government and missing today is routing. And we chose Valhalla uh, to do the Israeli routing services. Uh, it's supported by Mapbox uh, currently. Uh, Mapbox uh, like bought the team that used to develop it. And we really saw it's fast and reliable. It's JSON based, both input and output and it, it provides us everything we need in terms of uh, route calculations, route optimizations, uh, service area, and everything we need. And we're going to allow to use it both on our interface, both on our portal, and through API uh, to do mass calculations in a free way, the same way as, uh, as our API allows other functions today as well. And uh, like show demonstration, we're clicking a lot of points on the map, and once we will calculate the route, it, it will be ready momentarily. Uh, one limitation that we have with Valhalla is the format of the data needed to be OSM, so we, uh, we translated our data into OSM formats, and that's how we're going to do at the background. And Okay, one more thing that we wanted to to be online with, and uh, bureaucracy probably will not allow us to do it, is the national election applications. There will be 17th of September, second uh, term of elections in Israel, because the last ones weren't successful enough. And we, we, made, we made this application, it's also Mapbox based. Uh, what's unique about it is, uh, I can't call it serverless, but it's completely offline. Uh, everything is pre-calculated, pre all the cache files, all the information regarding the election results is stored as JSON files. All the geometries, which are cities, neighborhood, and statistical areas, are also pre-calculated. So there are no, no, uh, no database uh, requests and no, no server requests. So it's, it's completely... Can, cannot be destroyed. Well, everything can be, but... Uh, and we made it especially after uh, a small fiasco that we had in Israel with ESRI architecture, uh, which, were, uh, which happened during the Israeli local elections in local authorities, and they tried to, to show the results through ArcGIS Online, and it totally collapsed, and, uh, and the Ministry of Interior, which were responsible for it, suffered some like, damages because of it. Uh, so it has some several capabilities. This one shows you a distribution of uh, of the winning parties in northern Tel Aviv. So in Tel Aviv, it's quite homogenic. The Israeli Labour Party won there. And the previous one is showing that central of Israel voted for also the Israeli Labour Party, besides Petr Tikva city, which voted for the winning party, the Likud. And uh, this is an orthodox town which voted for the orthodox parties. Uh, another statistical capabilities that we made is to see in which settlements there were highest percentage uh, vote to by certain parties. We also made uh, an ability to see in which cities there were closest results to the national resort, results. And this will allow people to, to actually see uh, what, are the res what are the voting patterns in the places where they live in the neighborhoods? It will allow the parties themselves to recognize better their bases. Um, I hope maybe Academy will also use uh, this application. And I really hope it will go online eventually after the elections. The result will be final. Something that we currently have, um, it's implemented inside our uh, current version. Uh, and the intention was to to promote renewable energy in Israel, and it was uh, made in collaboration with uh, also Meteorological Service and the Ministry of Energy in Israel, and that's potential wind energy application. We, we had 1.7 billion records which we needed to, 
to calculate and create the grid that you see on the screen. And the, the grid is 100 meters on 100 meters. And each grid has some information which uh, the wind rose is drawn from. And we just couldn't make it with Oracle. It didn't work. We couldn't even pre generate the model. And not talking about like retrieving the information. And with Postgres, it was possible. And I even made this screenshot of the amount of rows that we have inside. And uh, final is Elasticsearch that I mentioned before. Uh, it's, it should be online like in probably in a couple of months. Now it's in beta. And we're going to allow a single line search, natural language search. Uh, in the first uh, level, it will be just an address, points of interest, uh, blocks and parcels. And later on, we plan to, to make uh, like search simple queries like uh, schools in neighborhoods, uh, cellular antennas around kindergartens in certain places. So the user will not need to uh, toggle layers or search for anything. So he'll just be able to type what he wants in natural language and get the results. And uh, I think that's it. I hope I wasn't too quick. <laughs> oh, great. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. OK. So a conclusion, like, yeah, a short conclusion. <laughs> So we, we think and we see that the governmental portal GovMap is a crucial tool in Israel which allow both public and governmental organization and even businesses to, to have GIS capabilities without investing and reinventing anything. And we see ourselves as a hub for uh, Israel governmental data and we have new customers joining every day. Uh, last customer that put his data on the portal was a, a recycling company of Israel, and we, we now show the recycling points uh, nationwide on a map. And we also plan that this application will serve as a, as a foundation for smart city abilities, especially in communities which, are, which can't invest money in, uh, in IT and GIS. And the open source transformation which will, make a, will make it a lot of easier to, to scale up our operation, which are very hard today because of uh, both costs and the governmental bidding processes and uh, the architecture itself. It's not very easy to scale. And the transition to open source will allow it to scale up and to implement on-prem installation with, uh, with clients that need it. And that's it. Thank you. <laughs> Great, thank you. Do we have, we've, got, we've got time for questions. I think we've got five minutes if uh, anyone has a question for Uri. Okay, yep, I'll chap at the back. Um, it's great. <laughs> uh, just a question about Elasticsearch. Do you use the paid version or the free version? Free version, okay, thank you. And are you, are you satisfied with it? <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, I'll just, uh, okay, yep. Uh, thank you. Um, you mentioned you use GeoServer now to provide the data. Um, do you use the, do you use it to provide vector ties? I guess, yes, if you use Mapbox. And uh, second question, uh, do you style it on the backend side or do you style it on the client side? So we do use GeoServer to create uh, MVT, the vector tiles, and we style it uh, not on GeoServer, we style it with, uh, with Mapbox styling JSONs, uh, like even manually. <laughs> uh, do we have any, any other questions? Okay, no, I, will, I've, I have a question. So for the Elasticsearch, have you looked at all or are you using heavily any of the geospatial uh, features in Elasticsearch? GeoShape or GeoPoint? No, not yet. We, we actually made it through Contractor, uh, which worked with us now. We're in transition between developing teams. Uh, so he, he made this job for us. Uh, I don't really, I can't really tell what's, uh, what's the abilities there. Okay. Um, yeah, if you, if you need any advice, give us a call. Uh, just let us know and we can uh, share our experience. Our, our software's built on Elasticsearch. 
And yeah, you don't really see a lot of Elasticsearch uh, Phosphor G. I mean, it is open source software to a degree. I know there's been a bit of a uh, bit of a furore in the community uh, recently between AWS and Elasticsearch, but it's a really fantastic platform. And the Geo capability has just had a huge uh, a huge performance lift. And it's really uh, it's really worth looking at if you if you've got a project that does search and geo, it's worth having a look. Jody, uh, I just I think Geo Networks starting to look the Geo Network PSC was starting to look at integrating Elasticsearch. Oh, okay, okay, awesome, that's great. Yeah, uh, any other questions from anyone at all? No. Okay, fantastic. Well, thank you, Ree. It looks amazing. Congratulations. You've done, you guys have done an amazing job. And we've got uh, 10 minutes, I think, until the next presentation. So uh, stay if you can. And uh, if not, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thank you.